What's going on guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS bringing you a video on the ICL. What is the ICL? That is the International Clash League. We had a preview war that went down this weekend, a huge 50v50. Immortal Thieves taking on the Dark Knights. So we're going to cover all the questions. We're going to answer what the difference in the leagues are. Basically, the who, what, where, when, why, and how on what the ICL is. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the action. All right, guys, so before we get into the video, before we get into the big war uh, that went down this weekend, a huge 50v50, is what is the ICL? Basically, what the ICL is, it, what it stands for is the International Clash League. And it's basically a competitive league that basically it's a, a group of guys who wanted to do things a little differently and who, who were not happy as quite a few people have not been lately in all, in all fairness with the CWL. So they went ahead and switched things around a little bit. There are some similarities. There are also uh, a lot of differences that where they're really trying to separate themselves from the CWL as much as they can. And the, another question a lot of people have is why was it made? Why, why do we have the International Clash League when all these people can just go to the CWL? Well, for a clan like Immoral Thieves, um, basically the, the, the deal with Immoral Thieves, as I did make a video on it, I will have a link at the end of the video if you guys want to check that out. Uh, they had a, a, a pair of modders who were kicked from the clan, they had the Supercell ban, whatever. And basically what ended up happening is without really any investigation um, on many people's uh, separate accounts, there wasn't a big investigation and Immortal Thieves was removed, as a lot of you guys know, from the uh, semifinals. Uh, before the semifinals in the CWL, right in the playoffs, uh, they were removed at the, the very same time that uh, Swami Kotkat and the Swarm were removed and a lot of these guys felt like they were left kind of high, uh, high and dry You know leadership wasn't even involved uh, with the modding. It was more or less quote-unquote a lone wolf type situation And it left a lot of guys, you know, pretty uneasy So they said, you know what you can have your CWL. We're gonna do it our way and they asked me to cover this war uh, between TDK which is the Dark Knights who have now uh, returned back into the war scene and Immortal Thieves. And this is basically a preview war. Um, just kind of give people a taste of what the ICL is all about. Uh, the first war or, or the, the, the first week actually kicks off August 3rd uh, for the ICL. Registration closes uh, July 21st. So if you guys are interested in joining the ICL, uh, if your clan is interested in joining, make sure you get those applications in before July 21st. And in my humble opinion, what I would say the big differences between the CWL and the ICL, the International Clash League, is there's no admins. There is no admins at all. Um, basically a separation of powers, if you will, where no one is really uh, overpowering any, anybody else, uh, where someone, you know, everyone's calling the shots. So they basically have a staff. These are the, the simplest way to define staff is they're the ones who maintain the Twitter, you know, are going to be maintaining um, the, uh, the, you know, the YouTube channels, the media, uh, who, who are in contact with the media, who's the ICL is very big on streaming, uh, recaps, all that good stuff. And, you know, they maintain the Discord server, questions, comments, concerns. They're basically like uh, the public relations of the ICL is a good way to look at what uh, staff is. Um, the other branch, uh, again, being separation of powers, the other branch of the ICL is the council. Uh, the council are, is basically they take one leader from each clan that is in that is part of the ICL. And basically what the council does, you have one leader from each clan and they have a vote. They have a vote. I believe there's 50 leaders, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe, maybe it's 32. No, it's, it's 32. And there's going to be 32 clans in the first season of the ICL. I don't know where I got the 50 from, uh, 50 from uh, but there's going to be 32 leaders in, as a part of this council. So when they're voting on things like bans, uh, whether that be perma bans, 
or temporary bans, uh, if it has to do with any decisions that have to be made that are involving the league, involving the clans, um, any type of investigations, the council will have a vote on it. Every single vote counts between uh, these 32 uh, between these 32 leaders, uh, one representing each clan in the league. And basically, everybody has a voice. Uh, a very, uh, basically, a way to dumb it down is every single clan has a voice in the ICL, as opposed to um, in the CWO, where you have eight or nine admins who will basically make the decision for everybody. Uh, again, just one other thing that will separate the two leagues. And in case there's a tie, remember it's an even number. So in case there's a tie, there is a commissioner. And I know a lot of you guys know this gentleman and that is Rigoletto. So commissioner Rigoletto uh, would be the deciding uh, vote in the event that there was a split decision on uh, you know any given subject that had to be voted on. If it was split, Rigoletto would come in and basically break the tie. And uh, so basically uh, the first uh, first clips you guys are seeing in the video was a breakdown of each class uh, or actually each division. So you have Prime, which is basically be your equivalency of Premier uh, in CWO. So you have your Prime, uh, Prime Division and you have the Elite Division. Elite would basically be the equivalency of Invite and in those you have a uh, total of 16 clans in each of these divisions and basically when it comes to scheduling wars uh, there's no favoritism every single clan wars the other one inside um, of these divisions which is really really interesting so there can't be any type of favoritism uh, you know as far as who's gonna be warring who everybody wars everybody uh, very very interesting how they were able to break that down and get it all sorted out uh, big fan of that I think that's really really cool um, so yeah so you have prime and you have elite now remember this is only the first season so it's starting off very small uh, I mean even before I mean before CWO season 2 there was no such thing for example as uh, CWO uh, rising uh, there was no rising league uh, in CWL so they're, all, they're I mean you got to start they're starting off small and depending how much attraction they get, how many people apply, you know, and basically how the war community accepts this in. And I mean, things could blow up. I mean, you just never know. No one really knew how far the CWO was going to go. And lo and behold, it's a super self sponsored event now. So who knows what can happen with the International Clash League? Only time will tell. Uh, but I think it's really, really interesting. I think it's cool. I mean, I have heard a lot of people say that the reason why a lot of people say the CWO is the reason why they say why they're still playing the game which is very true you cannot go against that a lot of people say the only reason there or the only reason why some people war in the CWO is because there's no alternatives there's no other competitive league uh, set up where they can you know where they can war competitively uh, with their clan where at the end of the day where it means something now that is where the ICL can step in and say there is an alternative, there is something else that you guys can do. Um, and I think it's really interesting. I mean, I commend them, you know, for taking on uh, a challenge like this. I mean, it's definitely not easy uh, to put something to put something together like this. And I mean, it's only been, I'd say, maybe a month, maybe not even a month uh, since they've created this. And the graphics, I mean, are just very, very uh, appealing. As you guys saw in the beginning of the video, uh, these graphics are just absolutely amazing. So what we're looking at here, guys, um, now that we got basically the bread and butter of what the ICL is, we'll go ahead and recap a couple of these attacks coming from the Immortal Thieves and the Dark Knights War. Remember, this is the preview war, uh, so this isn't an official war as far as ending up on records. Just a preview war. Think of it like preseason um, leading up to week one, which again is going to be August 3rd is when the first wars are going to be kicking off. So basically on this attack right here, basically doing a Sui Hero Lalo on this one. Very, very nice breaking the queen in. Uh, King just basically tanking, getting rid of all that trash on the upper right hand side. Had a nice wall break. Queen got both air defenses. Uh, she cannot quite reach that Inferno Tower, but her job was definitely done clearing that entire uh, 12 o'clock compartment up there. 
And you, as you see, there is a Hound Loon in the CC. Gonna go ahead and drop down those loons up at the top, indecisive, dropping down the haste to lead everything in right into that Inferno Tower. Gonna go ahead and one-shot it. Here comes the Loon Parade over from the nine o'clock side of the base, hasting everything in. Uh, he's got three haste down right now, still has a heal spell and a rage to drop as well. Also has two skelly spells for the queen. Uh, not sure if he wanted his queen, if he thought his queen was gonna be able to sui uh, the queen in the core there but was just came up just shy but he did have two skelly spells just in case uh, was able to take out the enemy queen nice heal spell uh, covering both of those wizard towers right there as well as a couple of those archer towers as well so got really good value from that heal spell followed up by the rage as well very very nicely done and it's pretty much just clean up uh, from here on out uh, clean up this base so really nice hit to indecisive and keep in mind guys um, we had immoral thieves again taking the victory as you guys saw in the start of the video taking the victory and not only that doing it with style as they had nine 10 v 10 triples um, they had nine 10 v 10 triples and they also had two 11 v 11s and the breakdown was 722 was the breakdown so it was a huge war of 50 v 50 and basically nines filled up the rest of the map so really really great job um we saw the 9v9 and we saw a pair of the uh 10v10s or a few 10v10s now we're gonna go ahead and check out uh both of the 11v11s that came from this war uh we have maple coming in here from the bottom right uh just gonna be jumping in had a, a rage spell as well followed up by the poison to go ahead and take out that enemy loon just got amazing value from that kill squad right there uh really saying a nice uh, a nice path through the base uh, basically loons coming in from the bottom left uh, just bringing everything in dropping down the haste and you can see how the defenses are pretty much side by side uh, just trash on the outside just a nice defense ring right on the inside nice l-shaped pathing uh, for the loons there they're going to take out this base no problem uh, still has a heal spell to drop down and there it goes covering up those last few defenses and really nice uh, placement on that as it does catch both of those wizard towers as everyone knows how much damage uh, those wizard towers do uh, these max wizard towers on these town hall 11s uh, but yeah just an, I mean just an amazing war all around uh, putting up two 11 v 11s guys uh, just an amazing war that went down in this preview war. Immoral Thieves and the Dark Knights doing it nice and big. Last building to go down was the Town Hall. All kinds of pups, all kinds of minions. Now, we have one more. We do have one more 11 v 11 for you guys. Uh, the first one was also a Lalo. Uh, same thing with this one, but we're going to be doing a queen charge on this one. We got Hammerin starting off at 11 o'clock, gonna be walking down. And if you guys take a look, this is a fully max defense uh, Town Hall 11. Just gonna get amazing value uh, from this queen charge right here. Uh, as he's about to be breaking her in. Uh, does have the king down there at nine o'clock. Just gonna be trimming all this trash. So not only speeding up the charge for the queen, but making sure uh, that she goes in uh, to the base as, as opposed to uh, wrapping around on the outside. Goes ahead and uh, pops the king ability. Uh, just to push him a little bit further end up even breaking the wall and taking out that archer tower uh and right when the king went down you see he did drop the grand warden just to help with this queen charge and he does have the max level five uh level five healers behind his queen and it seems like this queen can just go forever especially when doing a queen charge not only with the warden but with those new uh level five healers and really love the graphics on those healers as well uh, goes ahead and draw, uh, pops the Warden ability as the Queen was under a lot of fire right there. Followed up by a Ray just to push her through uh, that Archer Tower and that Expo. Uh, went ahead and took care of the enemy Queen as well. Uh, had a nice Poison right there. Go ahead and drop one more Ray just to kind of help uh, beat through this enemy CC as it was a baby drag uh, witch that came out of it. Here comes the loons uh, coming in from 11, just going to sweep across uh, the far right hand side of this base. Here comes the other hound. Uh, dropping those loons on those mortars at 3 o'clock. Here comes the rest of the loon parade heading in um, 
And you see it does have a rage freeze right there on that second and final Inferno Tower, uh, followed up by another haste right there. Just do an amazing job. And I mean, the loon deployment, the queen charge, completely ended up smashing this base. A uh, very, very nice attack to hammer in on this one. Um, Again, they had two 11v11 triples, as well did uh, TDK. Again, Immortal Thieves did win the war, but um, TDK did put up two 11v11 triples of their own. The difference maker of this war, guys, was the 10v10s. That really, really made all the difference in this one. And as you guys see it right there, Immortal Thieves walking away with the victory. 143 to the Dark Knights, 138. And just an amazing war all around. I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And this was the preview war, the preseason war, uh, just trying to kick things off, get their name out there. And remember, in case you guys missed it, July 21st, 2017 is the last day of clan registration uh so if, if you are watching this video and you're interested in joining the international clash league the icl make sure you get those applications in i will have links for everything uh top to bottom for you guys down in the description um down in the description on this video also if you want to see the dark knights uh coverage of this war make sure you guys if you're not subscribed to him already i'm pretty sure you are make sure you guys follow and check out echo through me i'll also have a link to his channel in the description on this video and i really, really hope that you guys enjoyed it kicking off the icl the first week is going to be August 3rd. Uh, gonna be a crazy week, and, and it's gonna be really interesting to see what clans end up in the ICL. And that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. I think we did the who, what, where, when, why, how, and what the ICL is. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.